Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. Now in this video, we will be discussing about the first type of tissue system that is the epidermal tissue system or the dermal tissue system. So the learning objectives will be to learn the general features as well as the components of the epidermal tissue system. Now epidermal tissue system, just the way we have skin in our body, right? In the human body, skin is the first line of defense, right? It is the largest organ and its major role is to protect our body from the external factors which can be extremes of temperature, which can be external agents like infectious bacteria or different types of organisms. It can also protect us from excess loss of water from our body, right? So all these functions, just the way skin performs in our body, the dermal tissue system performs in plant body. So it is the outer covering of the whole plant body. Just the way we have skin on each and every part of our uh, body, similarly plants have dermal tissue on each and every organ, that is the stem, leaf as well as the root. Now, we have already learned in previous video, they are derived from primary meristem, protoderm of the apical meristem, right? Now, also this dermal tissue system is made up of three components. The three components are the epidermis, the stomata and the epidermal appendages like the trichomes and the hair. Now, epidermis. So, epidermis is the first line of defense of a plant body. It is the outer covering. Just the way our skin is made up of different layers, similarly epidermis is a part of dermal tissue system which is the outer protective covering which is a thin layer of single cells, right? Single layer of parenchymatous cells. So the cells, if they are parenchymatous, they've got to be living, right? They are compactly arranged, right? So, outermost protective layer of all the organs of the primary plant body. This we have learnt in previous video also that epidermis forms the outer covering of primary plant body. As the plant grows in thickness, becomes wide and woody, the cork becomes the outer covering, right? Now, it forms a continuous layer. So, continuous layer means that the cells are very compactly arranged and there are no holes in it. Can you imagine our skin having holes in it? so that the external agents can enter it, it is not possible, right? Similarly, in epidermis also, there cannot be pores except for few minute openings which are mainly responsible for gaseous exchange which ultimately helps in photosynthesis, right? So, the pores which are present are the stomata in the leaf and the lenticels in the stem. Next is, it is usually single layered. So, there is a single layer of cells which are compactly arranged but it can also be multilayered in case of plants like ficus, nerium, etc. Now, the cells are living, they are parenchymatous, they have a little cytoplasm, large vacuole and nucleus is also present, right? So, these are the, all the properties of parenchymatous cells which become the property of epidermis also. Now, the epidermis is continuous layer, there are no intercellular spaces. Clearly, in the diagram you can see the epidermal cells are closely packed and there is no space since it is a protective covering. Space cannot be present because from the space the external agents will be able to enter the plant, right? Lower epidermis also they are tightly arranged but there are few minute pores which you can see this is the stomata. Now epidermis of root is a little different from the epidermis of leaf and stem. So it is given a special name which is epiblema or the piliferous layer. Since the function of the root is a little different, the epidermis is also a little different. Now you can also see above the epidermis there is a thick coating. So this co thick coating is made up of fatty substance known as cutin and the name of this, this coating is cuticle. So cuticle is a waxy coating it is outer present on the outer wall of the epidermal cells. Its main function is to protect the plant from the mechanical injury, right? So when a when large amount of wind is blowing or heavy amount of rainfall is happening, the leaf does not tear up. The reason is the cuticle. You must have seen that during rain, the water forms a ball on the top of the surface of leaf and falls down. This is because of this waxy coating which is cuticle. So it also prevents excess loss of water. 
So if cuticle, a layer of wax, we put on paper also, the water, the water resistance develops on the paper also. Similar is the case in leaf also. So what happens because of this waxy coating, the water cannot move out of the plant also. So water loss is also prevented by cuticle. In case of hydrophytes, there is again a waxy layer on top of the cuticle. So apart from the cuticle, a waxy layer is also present, which helps them in keeping floating in the plant, in the water. Now next, certain epidermal cells are modified. So they are epidermal cells only, but there is a slight modification in them. For example, in case of epiphytes like orchids, so they have aerial roots and in their aerial roots, a multi-layered epidermis is present. So epidermis, we generally study the single layer, but here multi-layered epidermis is present, which is known as what? Velament tissue. Now this velament tissue, its function is just to absorb moisture directly from the atmosphere, right? Next is the grasses. In case of grasses, the epidermal cells are larger in size. They have a big vacuole which can store water in it. Now the special name given to these type of epidermal cells is booliform cells, right? So the grasses have booliform epidermal cells which help in folding of the leaves, right? Now. We studied that apart from epidermis, the next component of the dermal tissue system is stomata. So stomata are what? Discontinuations or minute pores which are present on the upper surface or the outer first surface that is the epidermal layer. So they are the minute pores present on the epidermal layer, present in large amount in case of leaf, very small amount in case of stem and almost nil in case of roots. So roots do not have stomata in them. Now these stomatas their structure is somewhat like this. As you can see, they are made up of two cells. So they have two kidney shaped cells, which are known as guard cells, right? Now, these guard cells are surrounded by some accessory epidermal cells, which are called subsidiary cells. The guard cells are living cells. They have chloroplast in them, so they can photosynthesize also. Now, what is the function of the guard cells? Since they are minute pores, they are helping in gas exchange. We know for photosynthesis, we need carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide. So how, how the carbon dioxide is entering inside the plants? It is through the stomata. And also during transpiration, excess water is evaporated. This is also happening through the stomatal pores. Now, the inner wall of the guard cell is thick. The wall closer to the pore, which is the stomatal aperture, is thick and the outer wall is comparatively thin. This is to maintain the turgidity of the stomata during the water absorption. So, each stoma is surrounded by two bean-shaped, kidney-shaped cells known as guard cells. They are tumble-shaped in case of monocots and kidney-shaped in case of dicots. So this is to be remembered, kidney shaped dicots, dumbbell shaped monocots. They are living, contain the chloroplast, inner wall is thick, outer wall is thin. Immediate cells which are surrounding are known as subsidiary cells. Now one more thing, the lower surface of the dicot leaf has more stomata. So in case of dicot leaf, the stomata will be more in the lower surface. In case of monocot leaf, they are more or less equal on both the surfaces. And in case of floating plants, the stomata is present on the upper epidermis. Right? What is the function? We have already discussed gas exchange during photosynthesis and water loss during transpiration. So this is the structure of the stomata. This is how stomata looks inside the microscope. As you can clearly see, dumbbell shaped in monocots and kidney shaped in case of dicots. Now next is epidermal appendages which are the trichomes and the hairs. So epidermal appendages are extra outgrowths. Just the way we have hair, right? Whenever we feel cold, the hair stand up, right? Hair is also protecting our body. It also, it is, it is helpful in case of sweating, so, right? So all these functions, the way they are performing on our skin, the hair are performing on our skin, trichome is doing for plants. So trichomes are unicellular or multicellular hair outgrowths which are present on all the plants, all the plant parts, which can be on leaf also, on stem also, and but they are nil or very rare but present on roots also. Roots have specialized hair which are called root hair. So 
Now they can be modified. They are of different types. The first type is aerial hair. Aerial hair means present on the aerial part of the plant. Just the way you might have seen cotton plant, right? The cotton hairs are aerial trichomes basically. Next is the stinging hair. In the nettle leaves, the hair are coming out from the leaf and they are very poisonous. So they are stinging trichomes, right? Next is glandular means they secrete a liquid which can be resin or a mucilage. And what is the function of trichome? It prevents excess loss of water and it also helps in protection and secretion. Just the way our hair is protecting our skin, similarly trichomes are protecting the plant. Next is root hair. Now root hair are different from trichomes. They are unicellular and unbranched. Trichomes could be multicellular or unicellular, but root hair are unicellular, unbranched, they are lateral extensions of the epidermal cells of root. So these are the epidermal cells, you can see they are laterally extended, right? And unicellular, now this root hair cell has a nucleus at its tip and it has a large vacuole. Clearly you can see a large vacuole, nucleus is present at the tip of the hair, right? Now the root hairs are ephemeral. Ephemeral means that these hairs keep, get on replacing all the time, right? So they have a cycle after which they shed down and new hair is grown. So they are, they keep on getting replaced. So they are ephemeral. Now all these functions of the epidermis of the root is basically because the root helps in absorption of water from the soil. So the root hair are so thin, single celled and they have, a, they have a nucleus and a large vacuole. All these properties of root hair is helping it to get in between the soil particles and absorb water and transport that water to the tip of the plant. So all these, all these properties of the dermal tissue system is basically justifying the function of the dermal tissue system which can be what? Uh, the secretion, the protection, the absorption, everything. All these three functions are basically done by the dermal tissue system with the help of epidermis, stomata and root hair. Thus to summarize, we can say epidermal tissue system is the outer protective covering of the whole plant body. It is of three It has three components, the epidermis, the stomata and the epidermal appendages. Epidermis is the outermost protective layer which is thin walled made up of parenchymatous cells, living, has a nucleus and vacuole in it, right? Very little cytoplasm, the cells are compactly arranged, there is no intercellular space. Next is the stomata, they are minute pores which are present on the epidermis, can be present on the upper epidermis or the lower epidermis depending on whether the leaf is dicot or monocot, made up of two guard cells kidney shaped guard cells in case of dicots and dumbbell shaped in case of monocots and the main function is gas exchange and water vapor, uh, water evaporation during transpiration. Next is epidermal appendages which can be trichomes and hair. Trichomes can be multicellular or unicellular outgrowths of the epidermal cells and they can be of different types like aerial, stinging, glandular and their function is to prevent excess loss of water, protection and secretion and root hair root hair are unicellular, unbranched, lateral extensions of the root, they are living, they have nucleus at their tip and their major function is increasing the area of our absorption so that more and more water is absorbed by the root. So this was all about the epidermal tissue system. In the upcoming video, we will learn about the ground tissue and the vascular tissue system. Till then, thank you. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.